All right, so we are diving into something uh, pretty wild today. You've shared this whole stack of source articles, yeah, social media posts, threads, huh. all zeroing in on this one really intriguing object found recently near Buga, Colombia. That's right. It's being called the Buga Sphere, uh, a met metallic artifact apparently dug up back in March 2025. And yeah, the sources we have give us a lot to chew on. We've got linguistic analysis popping up on places like X, some scientific stuff being shared, plus, you know, all the usual intense online debate around it. Okay, so our mission here basically is to try and, well, cut through some of that noise. We want to pull out the really key pieces of information for the sources, the language stuff, the science claims, the cultural angles, the arguments, and just try to figure out what we actually know about this sphere or what people think they know. Exactly. Because right at the heart of it, there's this fundamental mystery. You've got an object found in South America, okay? Mm. But it seems to have ancient writing from Central Asia on it. Right. And what looks like, well, really modern tech inside, it's a paradox. It just immediately grabs your attention. It really does. Okay, let's unpack this then. Um, maybe start with the basics. What does the Buga sphere actually look like based on the images and descriptions in these sources? Well, from the visuals people have shared, it's uh, clearly metallic. Yeah. Pretty reflective. And size-wise, roughly like a soccer ball. But the surface isn't smooth. It's covered in these, like, intricate etchings. Symbols? Geometric shapes. Okay. And maybe most striking, there's what looks like a complex uh, circuit board pattern right near the center. A circuit pattern. Interesting. And those other etchings, the symbols that led to the language analysis you mentioned, I saw some posts, one I think from Tarkang007, really digging into those. Yeah, that account at Tarkan007 made a pretty big claim, mm. identifying the script as Old Turkic. You might know it as the Orkhan script. Old Turkic. Oh. It's this really fascinating writing system yeah. used by groups like the Guk Turks over in Central Asia, mainly around the 8th, maybe 9th centuries AD. Wow. And did they actually match specific symbols from the sphere to that script? They did, yeah. They broke some of it down. Like a diamond shape, mm -hmm. they identified as the Old Turkic vowel E, an S shape is Y, and a symbol like a cross, A's, is. A, A's, is. So putting those together, A, E's. Exactly. Which they translate directly as good spirit. Good spirit. But uh, at Tarkhag 007's post also mentioned, this seems to be just part of a longer inscription. The full phrase they translated is apparently Kazandaki Nefes E. Okay, Kazandaki Nefes E, meaning? Meaning the spirit in the cauldron is good. The spirit in the cauldron is good. Huh, that's evocative. And the sources mention how I means good, kind of like E in Turkish today, and E's is like breath or spirit, similar to nefes. Precisely. And to really get what that might mean, you'd kind of have to step into the world of those old Turkic speakers. This script, the Orkhan script, we know it from big stone inscriptions in Mongolia, right? Eighth century memorials. Right. The Orkhan inscription. Yeah. It's got that runiform look, angular like runes, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just used on giant stones. It was probably on lots of different things. And this connection to spirit and cauldron. Yeah, where does that fit in? Well, it points pretty strongly towards Turkic shamanism. That was a huge part of their belief system. Yeah. Spirits were everywhere. Shamans or calm were the go-betweens. And cauldrons. Mm -hmm. They weren't just for cooking. They were major ritual items sometimes symbolizing the cosmos or holding spiritual energy. Ah, uh, okay. So the spirit in the cauldron is good could literally mean, like, this sphere is a protective object containing a good force used in rituals. That's a very plausible interpretation in that context, yeah. Wow. Like a talisman, maybe? Housing something benevolent? Okay, all right. So you've got this object etched with ancient script from 8th century Central Asia, possibly linked to shamanic beliefs. But it turns up in Colombia, yeah. thousands of miles away, yeah. across oceans. And there's just no standard historical connection, no archaeological evidence of contact between those places back then. That part alone is just baffling. It is. And that massive geographical jump is really only half the puzzle. Because then you add in the scientific analysis that started appearing, like a post from at Mario 1973P shared details about what they apparently found inside the sphere. Right. This is the optical fibers thing. Microscopic ones. Exactly. Microscopic optical fibers. The images shared supposedly show these tiny structures and the analysis, well... It noted they look a lot like modern optical fibers used in telecommunications. Modern ones. Yeah. And crucially, the description said they could only function with energy. Okay, wait. So that plus the circuit-like pattern on the outside you mentioned. All right. Makes it sound less like just an old pot or something and more like 
well, a, a working device. That's what the sources suggest, yeah. Some of the researchers quoted speculated it might be for something functional, like maybe monitoring weather patterns or even some kind of surveillance tech. So let's put those two core pieces together. You have script that seems to be from the 8th or 9th century AD tied to ancient Central Asian culture yep. on an object found in South America. That contains technology that looks like it belongs in the 21st century. It just... It forces this really fundamental question, doesn't it? If the sphere is actually ancient, how on earth could it have tech that looks like stuff we've only developed in the last few decades? It completely messes with the standard timeline of, you know, how technology developed. Totally throws a wrench in it. And, well, naturally, something this weird, especially popping up now with all the interest in UAPs, it just sets off a firestorm online, right? The sources really show that X Reddit people are going nuts. Oh, absolutely. It's split pretty sharply. On one side, you've got the UAP community just running with it. You see replies on X, like from someone called Arthur Fowl, hinting about immense power. Or maybe there being other spheres like this one. Hmm. Others, like at Red Pilling Code, are posting visual comparisons, trying to link it to other unexplained phenomena. Hmm. For them, it fits right into this narrative of, you know, advanced unexplained objects maybe operating here. But there's also huge skepticism, right? Which the sources definitely highlight. And a big part of that seems to be the involvement of Hemi Moson, the journalist. Yeah, that's a major sticking point for a lot of people. Moson reportedly owns the sphere, and he, well, he has a history. He's been associated with some pretty controversial and, frankly, unverified claims in the past like those alleged alien mummies. Right. So his connection makes people immediately suspicious. Extremely suspicious. You see it on Reddit, for instance. The comments are pretty blunt. People calling him an absolute grifter, questioning the scientific analysis, right. suggesting maybe it wasn't done rigorously or used cheap equipment, wasn't independent, that kind of thing. Okay. But the sources also offer pushback against just dismissing it as a hoax, right? Based on the object itself. They do. The argument basically goes... Okay, setting aside who presented it, look at the object. Making something like this convincingly would be really, really hard. Well, you'd need deep knowledge of old Turkic script to fake the inscriptions authentically. That's pretty specialized stuff. And you'd need the technical skill to somehow embed what looked like microscopic optical fibers in metal. That's not exactly a weekend garage project. Hmm, good point. So the argument is the sheer complexity makes a simple hoax difficult to pull off. Someone quoted in the sources even said something like, uh, a liar can still be telling the truth. Meaning, maybe the source is controversial, but the object itself still demands a real explanation. And it does sort of land in this interesting moment, doesn't it? With all the official reports on UAPs, talk about objects doing impossible things, the idea of this sphere maybe being some kind of monitoring device, yeah. it connects with those broader discussions. It absolutely resonates. Yeah. People are already talking about unexplained craft possibly observing us. So a sphere potentially doing meteorological monitoring or surveillance, it fits that conceptual framework, even if it sounds wild. And you could even maybe reinterpret that old phrase, the spirit in the cauldron is good, metaphorically. Maybe not literal spirit, but the spirit or function of the technology is benign, protective, just watching. Interesting take. Okay, so with all this conflicting info, the script, the tech, the location, the debate, what are the main theories floating around in these sources about where this thing actually came from? Well, the sources tend to cluster around a few main possibilities to explain this this paradox. Uh, first, there's the ancient civilization theory. Meaning? Meaning maybe there was a human civilization way back right here on Earth that was way more advanced than our history books tell us. And this fear is a leftover from them. Maybe they even had links to ancient Turkic peoples somehow. So basically rewriting human technological history. Pretty much. Then number two is the extraterrestrial theory, the classic explanation for weird artifacts. Alien. Right. But it's not human at all made by aliens, maybe left behind ages ago. Perhaps ancient humans, like the Turks, found it, interacted with it, maybe even put their script on it or were given it. Who knows? Okay, theory three. The hoax theory. That it's all fake. A modern creation deliberately made to fool people. And like we said, the complexity makes that tricky, but the controversy around Mosan definitely keeps this theory alive and well for many skeptics. Makes sense. And there was a fourth one mentioned. Yeah, the most... Uh, out there one, maybe. The time travel or anachronistic artifact theory. This suggests the sphere is some kind of temporal anomaly. It's like it's from the future. 
or the past displaced. Something like that. An object out of its proper time, which would explain the impossible mashup of ancient script and futuristic looking tech being found together. Wow. Okay. So, regardless of which theory, if any, holds water, the implications here, as the sources point out, are just massive. Huge. Think about it. For linguists, historians, finding authentic old Turkic in Colombia, it completely upends everything we thought we knew about ancient migrations, contact, trade, everything. On a rewrite. Total rewrite. And for scientists, if those optical fibers are real, and if they could be studied properly, transparently, Imagine what we could learn about advanced materials, energy, maybe even data storage or transmission. Yeah, potentially game-changing tech. Absolutely. And yeah. they, there's just us, mm. society. What does something like this do? Well, it definitely sparks the imagination. For sure. But it also forces bigger questions, right? Mm -hmm. About our actual history. Are we alone? How does science fit with things that seem almost magical or spiritual? And of course, it highlights the huge challenge today of figuring out what's real and what's misinformation when extraordinary claims pop up online. Okay, so let's try and summarize this. At its core, you've got the Bugosphere. It's this metal ball found in Colombia. Right. Etched with old Turkic script, talking about good spirit in a cauldron, which sounds very 8th century Central Asian shamanism. But then inside it, apparently, are these microscopic structures that look like modern optical fibers, plus that circuit design on the outside, suggesting, you know, high technology, maybe for monitoring something. Exactly. It's this completely jarring mix. Mm. Ancient language, seemingly futuristic tech, found way outside where either should logically be. A huge historical and technological puzzle. And that puzzle is, unsurprisingly, driving tons of online debate. You've got believers tying it to UAPs, skeptics pointing to controversial figures involved. Yeah, but also counter skeptics pointing out how hard it would be to actually fake something this complex. Yeah. So the theories range all over the place. Lost ancient tech, aliens, elaborate hoax, even time travel. So it's safe to say this fear is still very much an open question. It's real origin, it's authenticity, what it actually is. It's all still heavily debated and under scrutiny. Definitely. But whether it turns out to be proof of a lost civilization, alien visitation, a clever fake, or something else entirely, you can't deny that this object, just the idea of it, has grabbed people's attention worldwide. It really <laughs> challenges how we think about our past and our technology. Which does leave us with a pretty mind-bending thought to take away, doesn't it? If you consider this incredible blend, ancient language from one part of the world, Seemingly advanced tech found continents away. What does the biggest fear, if its strange features are genuine, actually suggest? Does it hint that technology on Earth developed on a vastly different time scale than we imagine, or maybe even that non human influences might be woven deeper into our history than we ever thought possible? That's where things get really interesting to think about. <laughs>